Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. This is the Cyber Insurance as a Production Strategy webinar, and I'm going to go ahead and just hand it over to Jason Booker, our Senior Underwriting Manager. Jason, go for it. Thank you, Jane. Um, I just want to thank you all again for joining us uh, for another installment of our little Cyber Monthly uh, webinars, webinars that we're doing. Uh, this month, we're going to take a little bit of a different path. Um, what we kind of wanted to do was talk about the utilization and the implementation of cyber insurance as a production strategy. Um, and we've been traveling the country over the past two years, uh, meeting with agents of large and small sizes, and uh, picked up some pretty interesting observations and uh, knowledge nuggets, if you will, um, about what you know, about the way different agencies have implemented cyber and, and their different successes. Um, so first, for me, this is actually kind of a bit of a personal uh, story. So cyber insurance has been kicking open doors since the early 2000s uh, for a lot of folks, but for me in particular, um, in 2005, I had the opportunity to present the uh, topic of, or basically the, the concept of a privacy liability insurance policy uh, to the CEO of the insurance carrier that I was working with at the time. Um, he believed in the idea and invited me to participate in the ultimate build, development, and launch of what was an early stage privacy liability insurance policy. Um, at the time of launch, which was 2005, uh, the term cyber insurance had not yet even been invented uh, or coined, I guess is probably the better term. Um, and, the, and the product of privacy liability was underwritten and produced by about you know, a couple dozen uh, of kind of strange insurance streamers who had generally small offices off in the side or uh, um, you know, back of, uh, of the insurance offices. And it was just truly a niche of a niche of a niche product. Um, in the interim time, you know, cyber has grown to be a topic that pretty much every insured has at least heard of, um, has a, is, is a concept that impacts pretty much every single insured. And you know, for me, the, you know, my, my career path and trajectory has taken an arc with the involvement of cyber insurance. I don't think it would have otherwise. So I'm hoping to kind of convey a little bit of the excitement and the passion uh, into, into a marketing, marketing strategy to assist you in your production to grow your book, utilize it. Cyber. So anyhow, um, I found that cyber insurance really has a tremendous opportunity to introduce a wedge or kick open a door for production of every single business, both large and small. In our outline today, we'll just kind of briefly detail on how uh, different strategies that we picked up on how to produce, to add a reduced premium uh, for every single account, um, discuss how it's basically a great chance to add produced premium on every account. Um, cyber insurance is a great opportunity to discuss risk management uh, concerns and topics with every account. And, uh, and then we'll kind of round it out with the, uh, the concept of fishing with a net, which is something that uh, my boss, Clutsley, and Matt Clutsley, has uh, done a very good job of coining, in my opinion. So I first want to start off with saying, with discussing how the Center Cyber Protection Package was designed with a, with a key focus to solve a problem. And the primary problem at the time was that the, the simple act of producing monoline cyber insurance was simply hard. Uh, the amount of file touches were, were straight up killing production. And at the time, an agent would have to introduce the topic of cyber insurance to their insured. They would then have to get the insured to complete the application, uh, take said application to market. Uh, the agent would then have to follow for terms. Uh, the agent would then have to assess and, the, assess and evaluate the terms they receive. The agent would then have to present those terms to the insured, uh, then ask for the order. And then upon obtaining the order, the agent would then have to obtain whatever bindable, binding information that was necessary in order to issue the policy. It exhausts me just to simply detail the amount of work that was necessary uh, to produce cyber, model and cyber insurance. Uh, truth is, it was a, it was a problem. Um, and in addition to that, the mere existence and the complexity of the applications were killing interest. So even if the agent was successful in, in presenting the idea to the insured, the mere read and opening of that application was signing the process. So we really felt there simply there had to be a better way. Um, we, you know, this, this problem had to be solved in order to produce cyber insurance. Uh, so what we did was we partnered with a cutting edge cyber evaluation service. We recognized that this application and this application process was eliminating the opportunities to produce. Uh, so we had to get had to solve that problem. Uh, and what this cyber this uh, Cyber Evaluation Service was able to do was to evaluate the uh, basically assess and evaluate the uh, eligibility of an insured for the granting of cyber terms uh, without the completion of an application. 
This allowed us to, to accept the, uh, the simple application to bind an issue cover and eliminate those, all those steps and touches that an agent had to endure in order to produce insurance cover. And the second step was, of course, we had to partner with a creative carrier who shared a similar vision. Uh, you know, without, without a carrier that offers the paper, uh, the vision simply can never come to, come to play. So kicking open that production door, uh, I thought I'd share a couple of interesting statistics uh, that I think will assist in, um, I guess, assessing the overall opportunities that we all that we all are facing with cyber. So a couple of studies have found that the current market penetration rates for small to mid-sized insurers to be about 14%. Uh, I've seen studies that go go high and low and across the board, but I, from my personal experience, I feel that 14% acceptance rate to be pretty accurate. Um, it's really important to note that this low rent value of 14% is up dramatically from only 2% in, in 2014. So in the span of just over two and a half years since the study was mid-2016, um, the, the market penetration rate went, up, went from 2% to 14%. That's a significant amount of growth in a remarkably small amount of time. Um, but 14% means that there is still basically a virtually untapped market for the most part. Um, that same study had found that the overall insurance premium uh, for all of cyber insureds to be about $1.3 billion in, in 2016. Um, this was a 35% jump in produced premium from the year before. Um, and the same study estimates premium growth to 2020, which is you know, an, yet another way three to four years away, to be anywhere between 7.5 billion and 20 billion. So, which you're looking at a 4x uh, period of growth uh, during in a mere three-year time span. So, this is a significant opportunity for growth in production. Uh, but you're not going to be able to produce this, this. You're not going to produce the cyber insurance without a pretty good strategy. So for what we found when we went out to meet with insurers and meet with agencies in particular, that um, there was a wide variety of success levels of cyber insurance across all agencies. So we were meeting with folks from you know, small, small mom and pop shops to the largest of, public, largest of public insurance agencies and found that across the board, some had little to no cyber insurance placements um, and some had in-house hit ratios of well over 80%. Um, and we, what we discovered was that there were two key elements that, they, that, that the successful agencies were pu putting into play uh, in order to basically hit, uh, to, to place the most cyber insurance. And the first thing that every single high production agency mentioned was they utilized a proactive production plan. So every, the agents that, that were placing a lot of cyber insurance were obtaining cyber insurance or at least uh, were proactively obtaining cyber terms to accompany every single renewal presentation that they had had. So whenever they were meeting with their insured and presenting their renewal lines of general liability, professional liability, or other lines of business, they had in their folder a cyber liability uh, um, uh, proposal to accompany that presentation. Um, but the key piece that, that, uh, that the successful agencies did in order to implement this plan was that they identified specific opportunities where this production plan would, would have the most merit. So for example, one of the agencies that had the in-house hit ratio of over 80%, they had identified that architects, engineers, and, and contractors um, had a what they deemed to be a significant cyber risk that was not addressed in any other line of business. So for them, they focused all their they focused their primary efforts in obtaining proactive uh, to proactively obtaining cyber insurance proposals uh, to accompany their renewal presentations for all their insurers in the architects, engineers, and construction space. Um, and they were doing this on every single, this was a large, larger agency, um, and they had an in-house hit ratio, a production ratio of 80%. So 80% of all their insureds in that space, they were selling cyber insurance to. The importance of this identifying opportunity step was that they recognized that the resources that are available to obtain these proactive terms is relatively narrow. So by focusing their efforts and focusing their energy on a class that they had the, the most rapport and experience in, um, they had tremendous success in this space. Um, the other step that the successful agencies were implementing was a, a essentially they're bundling the cyber presentation within a package offering overall. So instead of saying, you know, here's your a and &E, here's your E&O, here's your whatever, your other lines of business, they're presenting the package insurance option um, within, within which the cyber insurance was, was, it, was included. Um, Oftentimes, they still would, would, would uh, label that uh, cyber insurance product as a, an optional product, 
but they were requiring every insured who rejected the, uh, this component of their package offering a specific rejection letter, whether the insured was affirming that they did not purchase and did not, they had no interest in purchasing the cyber insurance product that they had presented to them. The combination of the, you know, the package offering, uh, the rejection offering, um, typically drove their, their production rate that much higher. So again, this was the agency, these are the agencies that had the highest level of success. Um, the strategy that they, had, that they implemented was the proactive space and the, the package solution. So for the, the, the exciting thing I think about cyber insurance is that there is a just tremendous opportunity to produce added premium on every single account that you already write. Um, I, I find this just the, I just find it to be very exciting. Um, with, with the, the uh, aforementioned statistics that only about 14% of all potential insurers have actually purchased the cover, it gives you a virtually untapped opportunity to hit every single account. So we in-house have a hit ratio of about 18%. Uh, with an average premium ranging, between, you know, depending on class of business, between $2,100 and $2,400. This presents to you an opportunity to hit 18% of every single account that you write with an average premium of about $2,200. Uh, it's a great opportunity to round out coverages on existing accounts. Uh, I think that it says a production strategy to, to ensure that your existing renewals and existing accounts um, uh, to, to have a, uh, a accompanying cyber insurance product is a great opportunity to grow your grow your business and grow your production without ever even having to pick up the phone and add, introduce yourself to new uh, new insurers. Um, one of the more uh, I think one of the more compelling and fun uh, items of cyber insurance is that it is a true risk management conversation starter. So I'm, I'm an insurance professional, I've been doing insurance for 20 years, and uh, in my experience, insurance has rarely been a conversation starter at parties. Um, generally, the, the, the handful of times when a, a helpful person that I have just met is trying to fish conversation out of me when, I, when they ask me what I do and I say I'm an insurance underwriter, um, the topic will almost immediately go to their homeowner's insurance or, or auto insurance. It's generally not a conversation starter, it's usually a conversation ender. But when I mention that I'm a, a cyber liability insurance professional, um, and I write basically the loss of or theft of information. Every single person that I've ever spoken to has had a, has, it's, been a it's been a conversation start. And it's unique because every single person has a story. Whether they were, their, their credit card was compromised, the business that they worked at had a, had a ransomware event, um, or they, they simply have a straight up fear that their, their personal information will be taken or stolen via some crazy hacker who implements into a virus into their phone, computer, or work computer. So cyber insurance truly is a it's, it's a it's an interesting topic that can honestly that can honestly open doors for a conversation. And the thing I think that stops most folks from opening this conversation is that there is a fear that you must be a cyber expert in order to discuss cyber risk management services. Now, I, I open up this this slide with the mentioning that every single person has a has a story. It doesn't matter the level of sophistication that you that you do or do not have. Everybody has a has been touched in some way, shape, or form by a cyber compromise. Now, my neighbor is a cybersecurity engineer. Um, I think one of the most brilliant cyber experts that I've ever met. And even he has had his credit cards compromised, and has had his, his businesses have been impacted by a variety of cyber breaches. Um, so you don't have to be a cyber expert to discuss cyber risk management. But some of the topics that you can easily implement in order to, to facilitate these conversations. And the, the most easy one right off the bat for any business who accepts uh, credit payment cards is PCI compliance. You know, ask the simple question, have you obtained PCI compliance? Do you have an attestation of compliance? And if they give you that blank stare, which in all likelihood they will, you can then say, you know what, I have some resources available uh, for you that we, can, that we can utilize to obtain and maintain PCI compliance. I think you should perhaps consider this. It, makes, it puts you up into that, that the next level of conversation with your insurers. You know, other cyber risk management conversation starter is to ask an insurer whether or not they do or don't have a breach response plan. You know, most insurers don't. And an easy topic, uh, an easy point that you can make is that, you know what, I think you should identify a specific individual within your HR team or your production team um, to be your primary point of contact that everybody knows to contact when they, if they incur a, a cyber event. These are little topics that I think can really take take an agent you know, to the next level as far as a risk advisor with every insured on, as regards cyber risk. Um, then 
In addition to the, the simple conversation to topics, one of the values of cyber insurance is that there are a variety of risk management solutions uh, that are freely available to every single policyholder uh, to, to further assist you in your delivery of a solution to your insurers. So there will be more to, more to talk about some of these specific uh, services in, in uh, coming webinars. I want to introduce real quickly uh, two, of the, two of the new products that we have available under our program. The first is a group called SkillBridge. It is a um, web education resource that can educate everybody from the most sophisticated cyber user down to a person who has just been introduced to the concept of a computer on better computer use, better privacy practices, um, better implementation of privacy practices, and to make everybody from, again, that lowest of the low to the highest of the high of, of, of a sophistication level uh, to be a, a better cyber, uh, cyber individual. And the other service that, that's available to every single insured uh, is, a, is a group called Dashlane. And what this is, is they are, it's a tremendously valuable password management solution. So they can do two things. One, they have a, a password wallet uh, that can store all your passwords in a, in a very, very safe, secure location. So instead of the usual process, which most, most folks do, where they write down their password on their little notebook next to their computer, you can save it into a highly encrypted, highly safe, multi-mode authentication level access um, wallet to store any and all of your passwords. And the second thing that they can do is they can actually evaluate um, the, the safety and sanctity of your passwords. You know, are the passwords that you're utilizing uh, crackable? You know, are they, are they safe? Are they secure? You know, that, so these are two cyber risk management solutions that, they, uh, um, that every agent can, can provide to their insureds. And uh, the real value added on it is free you know, once they purchase the cyber policy. And two, it's an ongoing service that can be continually, you know, continually touched throughout the year uh, to kind of further your, your uh, feather in your cap as a risk management advisor to your insurers. All right, so fishing with a net. So this is a topic that I, I find most fascinating and um, it's probably the greatest opportunity for growth in all of cyber insurance. Um, and that is the opportunity to produce not just single one account, but one account many times over with specific groups, whether they be a franchise, a program, a group, or even an association. So with that aforementioned market penetration rate of approximately 14%, that means that 85% of the global insurers out there are not yet purchasing cyber insurance. So that is a tremendous group opportunity, you know, a tremendous production opportunity. In addition, cyber underwriting strategy actually kind of supports group opportunities. So, whoops, what happened there? Uh, I lost my uh, slide there. Bear with me. Where'd you go? Um, there we go. All right. Sorry, I don't know what happened there, but I must have touched something. Anyhow, um, so cyber underwriting strategy actually supports group opportunities. So cyber insurance is, is, a, is what I call a, a line underwritten product. It's not, it's not as much granularly underwritten where you're looking at specifics of a specific insured. You're looking more at a line of business, a, line, a group of insureds, and you make assessments based on the overall characteristics of that specific line of business. So with this line underwriting approach, it is a perfect match with groups, programs, associations, who aggregate large groups of common risks into a, into a common group. So it allows you to, with a fairly high level of confidence, to deliver a pretty, pretty ubiquitous um, level of terms, conditions, and, pro and product across the entire group. And then lastly, in addition, you know, cyber production solutions actually support group opportunities. So you know, our, our, the Victor Center Cyber Protection Package is back-ended almost entirely by our web portal. You know, this, you know, easy to, to, easy to use, low-touch uh, um, production solution is perfect fit for a large association or a large group or a program of any, of any sort where the, the complexity of handling a mul many, many, many insureds is simple, simply eliminate the conversation for most parts. If you had to receive submissions, receive applications, set up files, and, and manage each, each account, it, it would kill the opportunity. But if you can direct individuals to a portal or if you can direct folks to a, an online solution as what we've provided, it makes the, the opportunity to, to, to produce cyber insurance to these 
you know, larger larger groups that much easy and more realistic. And then also, the cyber risk management services that are provided by carriers can provide a real value added uh, to these group franchise association members. You know, what what association wouldn't like the opportunity to provide every single every single member business of theirs access to a, uh, a, a very valuable password protection and password wallet service provided by a, a leading industry service provider. You know, it, it doesn't cost anything to, to the agent, doesn't cost anything to the franchise, but actually delivers real value to the members. And that's exactly what every single association out there is looking for. And lastly, I really wish to stress that you know, the pricing continues to slide. So this makes group, group opportunities more palatable by the day. You know, every single, pretty much every week there's new capacity, new competitors in the market causing you know, the, the, the uh, continual erosion and more aggression on pricing. So these group opportunities where in the past the pricing might have been unrealistic for most of the members, now it's down to a price point that is truly a, a highly, highly, uh, highly likely placing uh, for these, for these uh, larger opportunities. So any franchise, and, and I wish to stress, you know, you know, for fishing with a net or fishing with a group, um, it doesn't require a group of 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 members. Uh, we've got a couple of, of programs that we have that we have placed here in house this this year, ranged anywhere from a team, you know, 10 to 11 uh, members, up to we're looking at groups that have, have up to 1,600 members. Um, any of these are just tremendous opportunities that make us very excited, and it's really a, a great opportunity for agents to produce and grow their book utilizing cyber as a production strategy. So real quick, the, the solution summary. You know, cyber really has been and continues to be a great conversation starter. It's a great wedge uh, you know, wedge into opening, you know, kicking open that door with every single new and existing insured of yours. It's a topic that every single insured has been impacted by. Uh, in all likelihood, it's a topic that they're concerned about. Um, you know, I, th I think in the past, the fear of the application process the fear of the pricing and the fear of the application has stymied a lot of those conversations. Um, with our program and some other programs on the market, I think that this is, has been greatly eliminated. Um, I really wish to stress that the current penetration rate of only 14% indicates this is an opportunity for pretty much every single engagement that you have out there. Uh, so we should be, should be producing cyber insurance on uh, basically every single account out there. The risk management solutions uh, can provide a real value and an ongoing service throughout the year, giving you that value, valuable touch that's, uh, uh, that every agent desires with every single insured of theirs during the year. Um, and I really wish to, to get people to think big. Um, you know, think big. What associations are you members of? What associations do you have maybe some, some, ex, uh, some, some ex existence with or touches with? What, you know, have you written an insured who is a member of a franchise? I think big. There are tremendous opportunities to really go big and go all the way, uh, utilizing cyber as, as a means of entry. And lastly, I really wish to stress to use focus in the cyber production strategy. You, know, uh, you will quickly overwhelm yourself if you try to, to go out there and from day one uh, implement a proactive uh, 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 indication strategy on every single account ever written by the, by the agency. You know, focus in on specific classes, specific teams, specific groups. Um, execute on that on those little groups, and then grow as you as you refine that process. Uh, I think with those steps and those stages, I think you'll see a, uh, a real significant significant level of success. So that, and then of course, if you ever have any questions, problems, uh, or need additional resources, uh, please do not ever to hesitate to contact any of us here at Shenner for the Cyber Protection Team, and you know, myself, Mark, or Zach. And we're always at the ready and always looking forward to anything that you might have to, to ask. And with that, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to, to, to type in what you've got. Uh, if you have questions thereafter, please don't hesitate to contact any of the members of our team. And uh, with that, I pass over to Jillian. Hey, Jason. A couple questions did come in. The first one is you mentioned PCI compliance, and I could definitely not explain that. So how do you see me developing new business opportunities when I'm not as knowledgeable as you are? Uh, as I mentioned, you don't have to be, I mean, you don't have to be an expert in, in, the, uh, uh, in the space. Um, so the, 
simple knowledge of a handful of questions or even being aware of the different resources that are available to support PCI compliance and the obtaining of PCI compliance. And so we did go, we did do a webinar series a little while back on what all of PCI compliance entails. And the primary topic that you need to ask or primary thing that you need to focus on would be, uh, you know, have you obtained PCI compliance? Uh, have you submitted the attestation of compliance to your merchant bank? And those are the two, two questions that need to be asked. And that would immediately give you the, the answer as to what you need to do for the next step. So if the insured says, I'm not sure of what you're speaking on, you would then say, well, you know, PCI compliance is something that's necessary uh, if you have signed on to a merchant agreement. And there are some resources that are available, notably TrustWave um, or uh, TrustWave, is, TrustWave is the uh, the most valuable one that I'm aware of, where it's a, a web service that basically walks a business through the uh, um, the process of obtaining cyber uh, PCI compliance. Or um, you know, there's some PCI compliance consultants that I can that I can provide links to. If uh, you know, again, that might be the the, value, the 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 point of conversation. That would go there, and go from there. Yeah, Jason, it's Matt. Um, the one thing I would add is that you know it, PCI is is one example, and a lot of people talk about that from a contractual liability standpoint. But when you when you think about the conversations for cyber, anything out of the newspaper is is an opener. Um, you know, it's a top five risk. For most business owners now, over 50% of business owners in a late, the latest survey stated this is a top five risk for their organization. Um, talk simply being willing to talk about the risk for cyber, or asking them how they feel about their risk for cyber, or delving into some of the questions is is a value when you're opening up a new relationship because a lot of insurance agents aren't willing to have that conversation. So that alone, just being willing to have the conversation and just qualifying. I, I don't have an expertise in it, but if you want to talk to somebody who, who we can get on the phone together, you know, we do have, we do have resources at, our, at our, our fingertips, but we know this is a hot topic for business owners. That alone is, is a good conversation start. Um, another question came in is, would a state CPA association be a good prospect? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, we actually have seen uh, an uptick in submissions from accountants, tax preparers, and similar. I mean, they have a tremendous amount of information, <laughs> both sensitive and you know, uh, legally, uh, legally required to protect uh, of, of private, private information. Uh, Cyber insurance is, is a hot topic in the uh, accountant, accountant space, and a, a state association for of accountants would be a, a, a dream opportunity. Great. Um, another question. I deal with many escrow companies that are looking for social engineering. Does your policy cover social engineering or include social engineering, and what limit does the policy cover for wiring fraud? Okay. Um, this is a hot topic. Uh, it, it, Social engineering losses, uh, specifically for escrow companies and title companies, it's a hot topic for cyber insurance. Um, there are some, piece, some pieces of it are unique to um, some, some of those coverage parts are, can be addressed under a, a network security liability or privacy liability. Uh, some of it are, is, can be addressed under a, a fidelity policy. Some of it can be addressed under an E&O policy. Um, at present, our form does not specifically address the, the social engineering losses under a, under the, the cyber crime component, but there are elements of it that can be covered under the network security liability. And the challenge of the social engineering losses that we're seeing is that no no specific event is common, uh, and, and that's where having multiple multiple lines of business and multiple multiple insurance policies in line uh, is, is usually the best strategy. Uh, Okay, um, another question. I get a lot of pushback from customers that say they outsource their IT and they don't need cyber. How would you respond to this, um, specifically taking into account that I do not have cyber technical background? Okay. The, the primary, and this is like, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, misconceptions, I think, on, all, on the entire topic or concept of cyber insurance. Um, so the use of vendor 
uh, does not, let me say, go back. Uh, the, you cannot contractually transfer uh, legal obligation and legal responsibility. So the, the legal responsibility to protect the personal information that you, that you have applies to the collector of the information and not the processor of the information. So even though you do utilize a vendor, and even if that vendor was compromised, the laws are going to the laws that, as, that relate to the protection of that information applies to you, the business who originally collected that information. And while there, you may have a contract between the business and that vendor, that contract has a couple limitations. One, again, as I mentioned, you can't contractually transfer legal liability. Uh, two, the indemnification agreement between the, the, the vendor and the insured is generally limited to the value of the contract itself. So if there is a significant compromise impacting all of your records, um, the value of that contract is likely to be far less than the potential liability that business faces for the loss of or compromise of that information. And lastly, if that vendor indeed sustained a systemic compromise, that may have impacted your business, your client, and also every single other client that they work with. So your client is going to be standing in line with that contract uh, along with their 100,000 or however many other clients they have all seeking for indemnification. The reality is that there's probably not enough assets to even make good on those indemnifications. So having a vendor does not exonerate the insured from the uh, potential liability arising from, a, from, from the storage of and maintenance of personal information. Um, it's important to note that a cyber policy does contemplate the use of vendors. And so our policy triggers from the discovery of a breach by a vendor or the insured. So if, if a vendor is utilized by the insured and they discover a compromise, our form can even trigger to ensure that the insured um, is being properly taken care of by that, you know, as a result of that event. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's probably the best response. I don't know if, if it matters, Jillian, if you have any other points to make. I think that's a solid response. Okay, then we are good to go. We're four over, so we'll go ahead and stop here. If you have any other questions, please do reach out to Jason. Um, and thank you all very much for joining.